Hi there and welcome to the July edition of our Redland District Angling Association Fisheries Feedback. Um, been interesting this month. Um, July is normally when it starts to kick off on our waters. Uh, the fabulous tench fishing we experienced in the spring has now given way to some pretty impressive barbel fishing. You'll see that from the catches that are reported later. We've also got quite a lot of other announcements plus our usual news and features. So let's get going. Okay, Dale. Fisher's report for July. Awful lot happens last yeah. month, didn't it? Yeah, it's been a bit manic to say the least. Um, so much so I had to disappear for a week because I think I would, I'd have just disappeared up my own backside. But well, uh, yeah, well tell us about the hatchery first because it's a, a, a bit of a historic occasion, I reckon. Yes, yeah. I mean, unfortunately for me, it was overshadowed a little bit because of all the stuff with the open day and what have you. So it was sort of overshadowed a little bit in my head anyway. Um, but yeah, um, we've put our first lot of fish in, um, 10,000 chub, um, up to about an inch long, something like that. Two locations, 5,000 in each, roughly. Um, I didn't count them. No, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, I, I, I think we can take this as a bit of a success. It's a lot more than I thought we'd get in the first year. I said right from the off, if we only got a few hundred fish, we'd we'd be doing well. And to get 10,000 um, has been really good. Um, we've, as I said right from, from the off, we've split it 70-30, so we've still got 30% of the fish that we actually bought on in the hatchery. So there's probably about a thousand chub or so, and 500 to 1,000 barbel. Um, again, like I say, it's their estimates because I know, but they're, they're they'll be growing on for re, uh, for release as, as, yeah. as young fish, yeah, yeah rather yeah. than as from yeah, up we'll, front. We'll, we'll be open to release them next year, um, and they'll be hopefully sort of three, four inches long, something, something around them. Sort Magnificent. Of so the the hatchery sites, the, sorry, the release sites were up at Hambridge. Yeah, top end of Hambridge, so right by the road bridge there. Um, and that's on the civil service wall, civil but obviously service benefits slash, clubs downstairs. Yeah, yeah, it's civil service slash Newbury. Mm -hmm. um, so there and the Cowpack stretch above our upper Benyons stretch mm -hmm. at Padworth. And, and again, you know, they're, what they'll do, some will go upstream, some will go downstream, some will stay the same. Mm -hmm. um, I did get a thing on Facebook sort of asking as to why we only done four, um, only done the two sites and not spread over a big area. Well, the reason for that is so that we can quantify what we're actually doing. If we, if we keep them in sort of localised areas, we should see a spike in population of chub in two or three years' time. Mm -hmm. And if we do, then we know we're on the right track. Um, whereas if we spread that 10,000 sort of over the length of the Kennet from Newbury down, obviously that dilutes it and you probably wouldn't see any any sort of that, notable that's increase. Like, yeah, I, I mean, absolutely get that point. But when, next year when we're probably talking 100,000, yes. we're, we're talking about more release size. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, this year, like I say, this year's right from the off, I said, it, it's a learning curve, a massive learning curve. And that goes down to the releasing as well. It's not just, you know, the breeding and everything else. We, we'll be adjusting what we do depending on how many fish we have in the hatchery. So, you know, if we're looking at 100,000 next year, which hopefully we will be, um, then, yeah, we'll pick more sites and um, hopefully we'll start sort of seeing some benefit in sort of three years, four years time. And do you want to just take us through the species you're hoping to, uh, uh, to, to, to breed next year? Yeah, well, what we're doing is basically gravel spawning fish and roach, because mm -hmm. we've got to do roach because I love roach. Um, and because we've always had the roach project, this sort of... Yeah, takes it to another uh, level. Yeah, it? exactly. So what we'll be doing in February, March, we'll be doing dace. Then April, May, we'll be doing roach. And then end of May slash beginning of June, we'll be doing chum barbel. Fantastic. Well, watch this space. Yeah, all exciting stuff. And uh, I apologise for putting a picture up of Keith Johnson uh, yeah. holding the back of your trousers, but uh, it was very popular on our Facebook uh, page. Yeah. And, and you and Keith are obviously very happy together. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, yeah. I mean, it took our, our friendship to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just wish he'd had some Vaseline. 
<laughs> this is a family show, Dale. <laughs> right, well, let's move on. You mentioned the Open Day. Uh, I'll stick a few pictures up of, uh, of uh, what I think was an in- incredibly successful day. And from my point of view, I just thought David Seaman was a superb guest to have. He was so natural with people, wasn't he? Yeah, he, uh, to be fair, I, I thought he was absolutely superb. He... I mean, what we normally do is we sort of like bring people in and we chaperone them around the site and this, that, and the and, and David was off on his own, um, you know, and he, he, he was quite happy to just disappear on his own and, and speak to people and take photos. I mean, I, I walked around with him for half an hour or so, um, introducing him to the various people, and I don't think we walked 10 yards without someone coming along and wanting their goalkeeper gloves. Um, everyone would come to a fishing show with goalkeeper gloves. Well, getting them signed, <laughs> getting mean, them yeah. signed, oh, yeah, right. um, and having photos, and you know, it, people sort of give him a bit of stick about you know the Spurs Arsenal thing, and of course the Ronaldinho goal, um, and he took it all in his stride, and he, he was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely and what you know what fantastic. was interesting? He actually came into the marquee to listen to your talk on the hatchery. I know, because yeah. obviously, as as a guy with a bit of bit of Kenneth in his back garden, yeah. uh, he's he's dead interested. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's actually contacted me since, and um, he's looking to get involved in so much as having his sort of back garden as a as a release site. Um, he wants to come and have a look at the hatchery. You know, he, he's really, really into that side of things. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, no, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to struggle, really, to pick a celebrity to guest next year. I mean, we've, yeah. had, well, we've had Keith Arthur, we've had Paul Whitehouse, uh, and uh, we've had David Seaman. So we'll have to put our thinking caps on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really don't quite... Uh, Hollywood A-listers, I think, are next. Well, we? we'll see we go. Going back to more mundane things... Uh, Big thank you to all the car boot stall holders. They, they did really well. Um, thanks to, obviously, Oz Holness and Alan Stagg. They gave really interesting talks. And basically to all our bailiffs and, and, and volunteers and everybody, and particularly the girls uh, uh, doing, the, doing the catering. They did yeah. a roaring trade. I mean, I just think everybody pulled together. We yeah. seem to have a winning format, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was interesting in, in so much as for the last two years, um, we seem to have had, and you know, this is something that we've looked at when we've had our wash-up meetings. Um, we've had a sort of glut of people when the, the, the boot sale was on, and then we sort of lost the audience, if you like, for over the last couple of years. But this year, it was a constant flow of people all day. Mm. Um, and I think that was really good, really good. You know, there was as many people at three o'clock in the afternoon as there was at sort of 12 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and it was just a steady stream. And the gauge of how many people we got here is how, how busy they were in the CAF. And I am reliably informed it was non-stop. Well, we have certainly, I, I know Richard, our treasurer, is still doing the sums, but we certainly raised a good few hundred quid for the Kenneth Hatch. Oh, yeah. And also uh, for the junior coaching. And... Uh, yeah, another big shout out to the RDA coaching team. I thought they were superb. I mean, they were fully booked. Everybody caught fish, uh, both on Wilmots and Callows. Really well organised, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And I mean, I, um, I mean, both myself and Jim and, and and Emma, you know, we we get extremely stressed the couple of days beforehand, and sort of once it starts and you get that sort of hour in. There's a big sort of sigh of relief from me particularly. I thought, right, yeah, that's it, we're done. I can't do any more now and what will happen, will happen. And I can't think of one single issue that we had that had to be addressed on the day. Um, so I think we, we've, we've cracked it. Um, I think obviously we're limited with space, we're limited with parking, so I can't see this growing into a massive event I wouldn't want uh, it to. no um, but certainly for an event for the community I think it's a really good I mean I met somebody Saturday I was sat outside here Saturday and there was almost as many women sat around Wilmot's with their husbands fathers whatever as there was blokes fishing there was families here they, it, it was it was truly remarkable and all, all of that was born out of the opening day and a lad and his dad turned up bought permits out there first time fishing and they'd come to the open day yeah. da 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 so you know it's a massive thing for us massive thing for us and it's really nice to have the facilities 
to lead these people into fishing. Yeah, exactly. Setting those pathways up. Yeah. Right, well, we better move on. Um, but yeah, big thanks, as, uh, as we said. And you can rest assured there will be a fourth open day. Mm. Um, Another big thank you to Steve Reed and to Paul Leake and and, uh, and Fred Jones uh, who put together our Better Fishing Academy uh, latest session. It was a Silver's Fishing Clinic on Brownlee Pool. That was uh, on the 27th of July. Uh, pop up a few pictures now, as you can see. Uh, plenty of fish were caught, including some nice small tench, mm. which I'm always pleased yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah. And uh, the next one is on the 17th of August. That's going to be a stick float clinic on the Kennet with uh, Mick Deadman. Fred's going to do it again and I'm going to help out as well. So still one or two places left. Uh, contact uh, Steve Reed through the website or message him if uh, you want to book yourself onto the stick float clinic. And certainly in my opinion, and I know yours, probably the most enjoyable way of catching fish oh, at all. It's the only way to catch fish in my opinion. <laughs> There you go. Right now, your little uh, your little idea, this species hunt. What's been happening? Uh, yeah, it's starting to warm up. There's a little bit of competition going on. Go on. Has anyone caught a uh, rough yet? Well, I can't really. Yes, they have, but they're keeping it quiet. They want to stick it in towards the end. Oh. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's it's actually proving to be quite popular. I mean, I'm a. I actually thought that there'd be more people involved. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, the, the Facebook page that we run it from has got something like about 100 and some odd um, members to it. But there's only, I think there's eight people that are actually sort of submitting stuff. So we, we really need you to get out there and start sort of submitting stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, and it's interesting and it's giving people, it's exactly how, how I, I wanted it to be. People are going and fishing. I mean, there's a couple of guys that regularly fish around these lakes. Cottage Lane, Wilmot's, Farnham Flint, and you never, you rarely see them anywhere else, yet they're putting in entries that they've caught on beat three and beat one, and you know, they're, they're because they're actively going out and they're actually fishing different waters Good. for different species. So that's what we wanted to do. So it's, it's going well. It Good. is going well. Well, should we put the link up to uh, how they can get onto that Facebook page? Yes. Yep. All yep. Right, we'll pop that up now. And uh, then if people want to join, it's still plenty of time. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's still plenty of time. But the, th the key is some of those species on there, you'll really struggle to catch come October. Yeah. So if you're not in it now, then, you know, you're going to you're going to struggle a bit later on. So yeah. um, you need to get get going. Absolutely. A winter rud are not common. No. There you no. go. Okay, that's uh, great, Dale. Let's move on. Well, Dale, the uh, 
predictions uh, from Jim last month about uh, July being a good month for Barbell on the Kennet have come true, haven't they? Yeah, it's it's doing all right, to be fair. Um, some big fish as well. And, and some small fish. Well, quite. Shane Page's one, five pound, about yeah. a five pounder. I yeah. stuck that up deliberately because... Uh, you know, it's all very well, these great big doubles, and everyone wants to catch them, but yeah. we need some backup fish. Well, that's it. I mean, as, as a fisheries officer and somebody that is invested into the Kennet as much as I am, um, I would rather see the smaller ones, to be perfectly honest, um, because that's what people are going to be catching in 10 years' time. So, well, well, quite. And, yeah. and, and one or two out of the Thames, including, uh, you know, what? tell me why Andy Dodds doesn't look happy when he catches a big Thames barbel. I mean, look at him. When does Andy Dodds look happy? <laughs> I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I mean, congratulations to uh, to everybody. Really fine uh, array of, uh, of, of fish there, of, of different species, some, some great pictures of, of the youngsters, Alfie Prince in particular, with that Wilmot's carp. Uh, look at the look on his face. Eh? Yeah, uh, it's brilliant. And I, I know I keep saying it, but that's exactly what Wilmot's is all about. Well, it, keep, it keeps delivering the smiles. Yep. So it's down to you. You need to pick the uh, July Fish of the Month yeah, fishing picture. Yeah, and, and as always, it's, it's difficult. Um, there's one or two that could have got it, but I think the Zach Cooper um, barbel is the one for me. Um, I know he's on some sort of quest to catch however many doubles and this, that and the other from different rivers. Well, you know, you're not going to go to a better river than the Kennet as far as I'm concerned. Um, and to get a fish like that, and he, he looks rightly so, chuffed. It's a nice photo, nice background. You know, good on you, Zach. Well done. Um, let us know by messenger or uh, text or something like that, uh, whether you want a course pack, cart pack, courtesy of Bank Tech, Rod Hutchinson. And of course, the Redden District cap will be winging its way to you. Thank you very much, Del. Okay, my turn now, Fish of the Month. Um, this has to be applied for through the RDA website. Um, Got two entries this month. Got Kevin Hargreaves again, who's having a hell of a season with the barbell. Yeah, and he just. Uh, 13... I don't think he sleeps, mind. because he. I, it's I think always he, at night, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's always at night. And he's always, oh, I, I left at two o'clock and this, that and the other. You yeah, know, I mean, I suffer a little bit with insomnia, but the last thing I'd be doing is going fishing. So fair play. Well, he's getting the results. So his 13 13 uh, Kennet Barbell um, exceeded the one he caught earlier in the month. So his personal best only lasted about two weeks yeah. that was pretty exceptional fish but i've actually decided this month to give it to shane page um shane has won it before but this 23 pound 12 river carp from i think it was from upper venues uh was pretty exceptional and we say in the criteria for the fish of the month obviously we, we're, we're looking at the size of the fish versus yeah. the british record but we're also looking at fish that are exceptional for the water in question and a 23 pound river carp is a rare beast and yeah. even rarer from the Kennet and a pristine looking fish as well. So Shane, you have won the 50 pound Angling Direct voucher and a nice trophy. Get in touch and we'll do the uh, the usual handover and uh, we're, congratulations on an absolutely staggering fish. Superb. I mean, I bet that pulled his string a little bit. I think it did, I think it did. <laughs> Okay, now time for Jim and fishing prospects for the month of August. Well, Jim, there's not much you can't catch in August, but what would you recommend given the conditions? Mm. Well, um, yeah, the weather's sort of had a really sort of hot couple of weeks now. Um, we're now sort of hopefully going to get into a bit of a cooler period. Um, so again, it's going to be your barbell again this month. Um, one look at our Facebook page and the, the video we've just rolled here will show you there's so many barbell being caught along the Kennet. Um, on, a, on a weekly basis, I get sort of people come up to me and say, oh, Jim, um, where do I sort of go to catch a barbell? I've sort of been out five, six times struggling and not had one. Um, they're not easy to catch. You've just got to put the time in, um, sort of fish these sort of late evening sessions. You will catch them in the day, but you've got to be in the right swims for it. So all I'd say is that if there's anyone out there that's struggling with their barbell fishing, just keep going at it um, and just keep working at it. You will get the results eventually and you'll sort of work out what you've done to get that result and you can catch consistently after that. What about the still waters, Jim? I mean, there's a lot of weed up this year. 
Yeah, yeah, so certainly got up this year. Um, I think with a lot of the sort of floods we've had through the winter, it's brought a lot of sort of fresh nutrients in. So a lot of the sort of lakes are getting algal blooms on them. Um, and the weed is really up in a lot of the edges at the moment. So for the guys sort of stalking on the morning, um, get yourselves around the evening before, maybe rake the odd little spot off in the edge and get yourself down first light and do a bit of fishing. Simple float stuff in the edge, catch plenty of fish like that. And Cottage Lane's been throwing up some nice fish. In fact, since we've done, or you, you primarily with the Friday Club, uh, have done all those work parties and cleared the place up, mm -hmm. it's been fished a bit more yeah. and, and it's been producing the results. Uh, mm. Any tips for Cottage Lane? Or oh, Cottage Lane. Um, well, if it's a hot afternoon, do not go down to Cottage Lane unless you've got some floaters or a loaf of bread with you because there's a lot of times down there I turn up, I have a quick walk round, there's people that are sitting behind static rods and they've been there for most of the day and in the lake behind them there's carp cruising about all over the surface so literally in 10 minutes you could turn up, get them feeding on a few floaters and catch one, it is as simple as that but you've got to fish the right baits and if the fish are up in the water don't be down on the bottom. That's good. And the Thames, of course, come August time, we expect the roach to be showing uh, uh, better, starting to have the hemp as yep. well. Still getting good reports from the new shared water at South Stoke? Yeah, yeah, really good from South Stoke. Um, I think there's been quite a few members going up there fishing. Um, it's nice to see people having sort of bags of bream, chub, um, a few small stuff as well. So it's a really good mixed fishery up there. Um, we haven't had any issues with the parking. Most of the people I spoke to have said parking's been fine up there. So yeah, a Another place to get yourselves to, guys. Uh, simple feeder tactics up there will work through the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, just keep that bait going in because there's plenty of fish in the Thames. Um, one thing I've noticed is the amount of chublets that are around this year. Mm. Uh, lots and lots of chub like this, and, yep. and, and, and well, up to a pound, which is fantastic news for the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in fact, they can be a bit of a pest at times. Yeah, they can do, yeah. Um, I, know, I know a few guys that sort of been out chub fishing recently, and they're, they're sort of trying to target these big five, six pound chub, and they're getting plagued with little pound chub, but that's brilliant to see, and they're literally fresh as you like, um, and that's the future for us. Well, I can remember only probably four or five years ago worrying about uh, the future of, of chub on the Thames because I was very rarely catching a fish under four pounds, you mm. know, yeah. um, but not now. No, I think there's plenty in there and the future's looking bright for it. Smashing. Well, Jim, thanks very much for your tips. We'll uh, see how accurate you've been next month. Yep. Keep them photos coming, people. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks, Jim. And that's a wrap for this month. Uh, weather's looking good. Fisheries are in decent condition, the fish are biting, so have a great time out there. Tight lines, and we'll see you next month.